Hi there guys, it's Nile here. Today I have a similar video to one I made a few months ago about spotting fake accessories with vintage Star Wars figures. And today I'm going to be giving you some advice about mint on card figures. Now most serious collectors of original Kenner Star Wars toys will at some point want to acquire a figure that is mint on card, meaning it has never been taken out of the original packaging. And in many ways, buying your first mint on card figure can be a rite of passage for Star Wars collectors, but there are also many things to be aware of and to be wary of. Now when choosing a figure for your first mint on card, I would strongly advise staying away from expensive figures, such as those from the early Empire Strikes Back line, or indeed the first 21, which is the Star Wars line. This is because there are a lot of fakes knocking about, more on that later, and they can be very expensive. On the other hand, a fairly good quality, I mean this isn't the best quality figure that I have here, but it, it displays well. A figure like this from the Return of the Jedi line should only cost you between 50 and 100 pounds, but you can sometimes get bargains, especially if you're bidding, because all I had to do was play my cards right, and I got this 77 back, Chief Chirper, for £26. And I can confirm that it is genuine. But of course, it doesn't take an expert to tell you that this figure is quite old. Obviously, the bubble is yellowed, and there is actually a crack in the corner of the card. And obviously, on the back, you can tell the card's creased. It is clearly an old figure. But there are better ways to tell because it won't always be as clear cut, especially on higher quality figures like this. And you can tell by the way fakers actually make the figures. You see what fakers do to impress the bubble onto the card is they use an iron. And sometimes that leaves a mark. However in the Kenner factories they actually would use a machine and they would essentially stamp the card onto the bubble. And if you run your hand along on the back, it's not very clear on this one, but you can actually feel where the imprint was. Because the machine, obviously, it was a heavy metal machine. Hitting it would leave an imprint. An even better way is on the seal. Now, the adhesive Kenner used for their figures used a waffle, a waffle-like pattern. I don't know if you can see it on here. But the pattern was sort of a waffle pattern. If you look up closely, I think, yeah, on the bottom you can see here, there. You can clearly tell it's got, like, a waffle pattern. And that is because of the adhesive Kenner used. But fakers are not able to do that, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I'm told some of the very first 12-back figures wouldn't have had that, but... You won't be buying any of them for your first, or indeed ever, unless you're super rich. In which case, you know, I do accept tips for the YouTube videos. But yeah, and another way, another thing that the fakers do is they often, they think it's better to use glossy card. And if you shine it up to the light, you can see it's very shiny, way too shiny on the fakes. And they think it's clever, they think it looks high quality, but it really isn't because the originals weren't very glossy. And of course the quality of the picture is sometimes slightly too low quality or too high quality. That's quite a hard one to tell. Generally you want to be looking for the back and the waffle pattern. But I hope you found this video informative. If you do plan on buying any mint on card figures then I hope you'll find these tips useful. Please feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if I did miss anything out then please feel free to comment and tell me and I can always put a notification on the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.